Hello friends. So in today's episode, uh, I want to take us back to the late 70s to peek once again behind the Iron Curtain and see what was happening in Eastern Europe. I've already done a video on a very similar cleaner to this one. I think they were, well, basically they were all made by Rotel, I believe in Poland. Um, and it, once again, a call out to any of you, if you can shed any more light on this particular machine, I'd be very, very grateful. Um, it's a Rotel, but it's not branded as Rotel. Um, I have a theory in mind that it may have been made for uh, a particular company, maybe a electricity board possibly, or um, a department store or some kind of shop, because I've never seen one like it, and I've never seen one with this particular wording on it. But as I say, it's a, a very similar cleaner to the Rotel that I recently, well not recently, but uh, uh, the Rotel that I, I, I did a video on um, a couple of years ago. The shape is the same, um, and it's kind of like, it is basically the same vacuum cleaner, but with a few sort of luxury touches on it. Uh, and when I say luxury, they're not really luxury as we would see today, but um, I suppose for e Eastern Europe back in 1979, uh, they are quite special. Um, kind of like that uh, Soviet Raketa machine I showed you a few weeks back. They are odd, they are odd. It's kind of like a goblin, but it's not a goblin, so it's a Rotel. Anyway, I'm rambling now, I'm talking, just talking nonsense. Let me show you the cleaner, and it is this. It is a 1979 Sterling Electric. You see it has Sterling Electric written here, and it's a registered trademark, which is quite interesting, um, and it has a little ST shield on it. But yeah, basically, it's a Rotel. So what is special about this one is that uh, unlike the previous one that I showed you, this has a bag full slider on it and a flex rewind as well. Now this in and of itself is quite interesting um, and b before I start to go into any more detail on the actual cleaner, I shot a little bit of video where I've taken the end off the cleaner um, to show you inside. So. I will cut over to myself now in the workshop and we will take a look. Here we are in the workshop with the sterling. So what I've done is I've taken the screws out of the base uh, and I'm going to flip it over and uh, show you what's inside. It's quite interesting. So I'm just going to flip it like so and then the back end just comes away and it's kind of uh, attached to it because it's got this little cable holder which, uh, well, it does actually go through there, which is cool. <laughs> so you can take it off, but you need to take the plug off as well. Um, just whilst we're here, interesting to look at these wheels. There's a, the plastic of the machine is really quite bad. Uh, actually, the, if you just see the pedals there. So that's the mechanism to put the pedals down, like so. And there's a bar across the middle to hold it all in place. It's very cheaply done. But these hubcaps, you look on this wheel here, um, they're sort of like, I wanted to call it plastic welded in place, but it's not, it's, they've basically just been pushed through and the plastic's been melted on the other side of the wheel. Oddly though, the wheel itself is held on with a, a metal piece, but there's like a clip that is loose on there. It's very crudely made, but um, surprisingly effective. The interesting part about the vacuum cleaner is how the flex wheel is mounted. It's actually mounted in a horizontal fashion. So normally you would see it like on the back if it was uh, Electrolux, you might see it on the side as well. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen another vacuum cleaner where the flex wheel is, is mounted like this. And it takes up a ridiculous amount of room. And that's why the bag is so small. Because you've got the flex wheel here, then here you've got uh, the top motor mount. And the motor is quite long and it runs all the way up here to sort of, uh, yeah, sort of about that position. So all that space is taken up with uh, the end of the cleaner, um, all this metal to hold everything in place, the flex wheel, um, the motor mount, the motor itself. So yeah, it's, um, it's taking up a lot of space. 
and if you look here as well on the on this so this is the thing that um, releases the tension to wind the cable in it's really stiff when you pull it out but there's a there's a split pin here and they haven't even bothered to split the pin <laughs> so it's still straight um, it's fascinating really it's quite an interesting cleaner this uh, I never knew it was hiding such secrets but yeah it's quite interesting so there we go a horizontal flex rewind wheel I'll hand you back to myself now and uh, we'll carry on talking about it welcome back so yeah it, it's quite interesting inside this cleaner how it's laid out and um, what it means is that uh, this section of the cleaner is massive and it doesn't leave very much room for the actual bag so I think what we should do is this cable is a bit awkward so if I just take the front off so you can do it by accessing this little clip here so it's kind of Hoover Freedom esque ish obviously the Freedom wasn't metal this is a metal cleaner um, and just just before I go any further interestingly the um, racing plate here is very very basic so all it does is it tells you that it's it it's a type 51 240 volts 50 hertz double insulated 500 watts very powerful and the serial number is 0579 now that's interesting because that would make you think that uh, this machine is from May 1979 and in fact the motor itself has a 79 stamped on the, on the top of the fan casing so I'm going with the idea that this machine is from 1979 now they can't have made very many of them it, to have a serial number in that format just a month and year they're not going to be churning out many of these and if anyone has ever seen another one of these cleaners please 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 comment because I, I, I haven't. This, this is the only one I've ever seen. Anyway, rambling again, sorry. Back to the machine. So you unclip the clip like that. It's quite strong, it's quite powerful, that clip. The plastic itself is not great, but it's got a little bit of metal in the top there. It's like a blade actually to hold the face on. So you remove the face like a goblin, um, and then you end up with um, with the front plate like so, and it's got a little little valve there. With some rubber on it to make the seal and then you have again it's very sort of goblin-esque bring it down like so it's slightly awkward um, you can pull the bag out like so as you can see it is a tiny <laughs> tiny little cloth bag it's so small whilst we're here this this is quite interesting you see the undercoat of the machine is this sort of brown paint with the blue paint over the top but the way it's been done is really poor. There's a massive amount of overspray here where the blue is oversprayed onto the middle bit. And you've got like the overspray around the edge as well. So it's obviously been made very quickly. Not a lot of effort has gone into the quality control of the paint. Let me stand that back up like that. Just to return to the bag, it's interesting how this one has been um, put in, as you can see. I think. The paper bag should come through the middle like they did on um, the Luxes and the Goblins um, but someone's put it sort of around the outside I'm just gonna leave it like that I'm not overly fussed about it but yeah then you can take the little bag out like so so you have a, a paper bag in this one unlike the Russian machine where you didn't have a paper bag you had that really odd cage in the middle this is just your just normal box standard cloth bag you pop the paper back in like so, as I say, I think it should come through the middle, but never mind, let's not split hairs. And you push it back down, and then that seals it up. And pop that back into the cleaner. Like so. And put the face back on. Oop, no, it goes that way. There we go. And then you just kind of clip it back into place. As I say, very much like a Hoover Freedom. Wood. There's an awful lot of tension in that spring. I just have the feeling that it's just going to fly off at any second. I'm going to put it back down so it doesn't. Um, it's in extremely good nick actually, I must say. It hasn't seen many hours use. It's uh, There's hardly a mark or scratch or dent on it actually. It's it's quite something. Um, 
as I, as I say, the method of construction is not fantastic. This pedal just kind of floats here. It's held in by a bar, which you would have seen in the um, workshop video. And the cable is very tight. It's, I think this is, this is correct. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just very hard to pull out. And you've got to really push that back down to get it back in. It needs a lot of tension on that pedal. So there's not really much more to say about the vacuum cleaner itself. It's uh, a Rotel slash spinny uh, slash sterling cleaner. Um, it's interesting. It's, it's nice to have. Um, I do just want to talk to you about the tools a second because the hose is quite interesting. Now, do you remember the hose on that uh, Russian briquetta? It was very short. The hose on this is massive. It is absolutely massive. Look, here's the here's the bent end, and again, just looking at that, it just that is Rotel, absolutely Rotel. There's no doubt in my mind. Even down to the um, suction control valve, it is yeah, definitely Rotel. But the hose itself is of an amazing quality. This is a really well made hose. The ends are all right, they're serviceable, but just look how long this hose is. It is incredibly, incredibly long. And the bit, so the, this is the machine end. It's massive. Look how big that machine end is. You think to yourself that um, the uh, Russian Rakesa was probably about that kind of size with a little screw on the end and the hose in turned internal to the fixing this doesn't this goes into this extremely long bit here so you end up with hang on, let me get the cleaner so when you put it in the front like so you end up with this massive piece just sticking out the front i just find i find that bizarre i, I don't know why they would go so over the top i mean really you could have just had it here you could have had this bit sticking out the front but you've got all this extra. It's very odd, very odd. But the hose itself, as I say, is of a really good quality. It's quite heavy. And the other thing that I, I want to show you is the floor tool. Now, some Rotels have really good floor tools. Uh, some Rotels have really poor floor tools. And this is an example of a really poor floor tool. This is it. This is your floor tool. It is um, cheap. That is the <laughs> that's the nicest thing I can say about this floor tool. It is cheap, and unfortunately, it's also broken. I've just realised that it's uh, it's snapped at the back. But my God, I don't think you could make a cheaper floor tool than this. Uh, Somewhere there's a brush attachment which you clip onto it for doing your hard floors, but this is what you got when you bought this machine. And it seems so unusual that you would ha you would buy a machine um, that was it was from the budget range. Obviously, that's fine. That's fine. No problem with the budget range machine. But for then for the machine to be given a bag full indicator and a flex rewind, and then to be given this cheap shoddy floor tool. You can actually see light through it. So if you look through here, you can't see it because the light source is behind. But if you, if you look through, there's no seal here at all. It is literally just this, uh, just this bit held in place by a couple of plastic lugs, these bits. And then you have this comb. So that's a thread catcher comb. That is literally just sat in there. Just the tension of it. And it's, it's warped over the years. It just wants to fall out and then you have a couple of screws to hold that in and in fact I think those screws are actually holding this in as well I'm not entirely sure um, oh yes they are yes so the screws the screws here screw through into these bits here so that's all that's holding it in place it's pretty awful to be honest with you uh, it'd be interesting to see how, how well this works on the carpet I haven't ever used this cleaner yet so it could go bang it may not work at all. Um, but what we'll do now is we'll take the cleaner and this terrible floor tool into the lounge 
I will give it a go.
I've got to say, if there was ever a, a vote for the worst floor tool ever, it's the floor tool on that vacuum cleaner. Oh my God, it is horrendous. It like skirts over the carpet. It goes um, and there's not enough suction power from the machine to actually hold it down. Um, and I think if there was, it would probably just snap. Uh, yeah, that was uh, really bad. My back hurts now as well after doing that. So I am going to go and have a hot shower. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. The next one's going to be quite interesting. So I'll see you there. Bye.